Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to develop using WSL. Sorry, I'm going to be showing you how to develop end curses in Windows using WSL. It's quite a mouthful. Uh, this is kind of an update to or an addition to um, a tutorial I did a while ago on how to install end curses in Windows using WSL. Uh, that video is a little outdated now, and I didn't really show you how to use it in VS Code, I don't think. So today is going to be more focused on how I develop using end curses in VS Code. So on Windows, using WSL, again, mouthful. Um, what I'm not going to be showing you today is how to actually install WSL uh, in Windows. I thought about doing that, but I realized I would have to probably uninstall it and reinstall it, and I'm pretty sure I would lose all my files. I'm sure there's a way around that, um, but I just didn't really want to go down that route. Um, and then I also thought about doing like a virtual machine with a fresh install of Windows and then installing it that way, but I found out that you can't do VMs within VMs and technically WSL is a VM. So if I ran a VM of Windows and tried to install WSL, it just wouldn't work, at least not with the current version of VirtualBox, which is what I'm using. Anyways, whole can of worms not worth it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'll put a card up above and a link in the description to my old video, which is a little bit out of date, I think, but I'll also put a card up above and in the description to um, somebody else's video on how to install WSL fresh um, from scratch. So uh, you, so you guys will know how to do that. Uh, so you should go and watch that first and then come back here and watch this tutorial. Uh, something else you'll need is you'll also need VS Code installed. Uh, that's very easy. You can either go, I think you can go to the Microsoft Store and download it from there. You can also just go to Google and Google Visual Studio Code or VS Code. It'll probably be the first link. You'll just click download and then it'll download and you'll be all set. So once you've done that and installed it, uh, come back here and we should be all set, ready to go. So, um, all right. So you want to open it up and then you'll notice in the bottom left corner, there's this little green icon. And when you hover over it, it says open a remote window. Uh, so what we we'll want to do is click on that. This is actually how we're going to connect to WSL. It also allows you to connect to SSH or I believe this is Docker containers um, and then some other things like a remote repository, probably something in GitHub. Um, anyways. What we want is, or what we care about is these top two options. Um, once you have WSL installed, I believe the default distro is Ubuntu. And uh, what this first option does is it opens whatever your set default distro is, which you can change if you want, but if you just install it and do the basic install, I believe it's Ubuntu. Uh, if you have more than one distro installed, which you can do, um, you can uh, click this connect to WSL using distro option and it'll allow you to pick from the, your available distros. I'm just going to click connect to WSL and it's going to uh, open my default distro, which is Ubuntu 18.04, um, which I actually think it's Ubuntu 20, but when I installed it, it was Ubuntu 18 and then I updated it, but it just never changed the name. Anyways, doesn't matter for the point of the tutorial. Um, yeah, so once it installs, or sorry, once it opens, You'll see WSL Ubuntu 18.04. I'm going to increase the size a little bit here so you guys can see better. Um, probably go down one more. Uh, if you're having a hard time seeing, I recommend putting it in full screen and increasing the um, quality a little bit. Um, I'll try to make it as big as possible, but I want everything to fit on the screen and be legible still. So. Um, once you've opened that, you'll like I said, you'll see down here it says the distro you're in, which is helpful. So you know you're not in Windows, you're in you're not in Windows land, you're in WSL land. Um, and then what you'll want to do is you'll want to make sure you open a folder. So you open up the Explorer, or you can go to File, Open Folder. Uh, but I usually go to the Explorer, click Open Folder, and then you'll see now it's you're again you're in WSL land. So it's it's giving you like a Linuxy path. Um, you're not seeing your Windows file path, and you can scroll down. It just brings you to your home directory by default. Um, I have a little tutorials folder, GUI status bar T3, which is a tutorial I'm going to be coming out with really soon. So you guys get a little sneak preview here. Stay tuned for that tutorial coming out soon, hopefully. But um, 
once you've clicked on that, you'll see that by default, my terminal pops open here. I'm going to close that. Um, I don't think yours will, but it might. Um, sorry if it looks a little different for you, but uh, so by default, you'll have your files over here. This is whatever folder you selected. You'll have your Linux files uh, that you can edit and play around with, um, and it'll all save to WSL, and you don't have to worry about copying files between Windows and, and Linux or anything like that. You can just develop right in uh, your WSL instance. Um, I actually had somebody who was telling me they were having issues getting this set up and how to develop within WSL, so I was hoping this would be helpful. Um, so once you're in this instance, uh, it'll obviously be helpful to actually uh, run stuff within your WSL. Now you could do it with the integrated terminal or you could do it with Windows terminal. I prefer to use the integrated terminal. Um, it's pretty useful, I think, because it automatically opens in whatever folder you've opened VS Code in, which is super useful. Um, I believe by default it opens Bash, but if you click up here and go to uh, configure terminal, sorry, configure terminal settings, and then I'm gonna close out of this so we have more room. Um, you see there's a bump, bunch of settings related to the terminal. I think the most useful one is, um, if you type Linux up here, you'll see there's this terminal integrated default profile for Linux. And by default, it's set to bash, which I prefer, um, or at least within my development environment, I like bash. There's also, I have like Zeesh and Tmux set up, it looks like, and Rbash. I, I don't know which of these were installed by default and which weren't, but um, I have Bash set as my default profile. Um, so if something doesn't pop up for you, I recommend going in here and, and choosing something from these settings. Again, I think Bash is a really good option, so I would check out Bash if you're not really sure what you need. Um, and then, again, I'm going to open up the terminal and... From here, uh, you can run any Linux command you want. Um, what you're going to need in order to get set up with NCurses is you're going to need to run, or you're going to actually need to install the NCurses package, which I believe I have saved in my history here somewhere. Here we go. So you would want to run, if you're running Ubuntu specifically, you're going to run sudo apt-get install lib ncurses 5-dev and the libncurseswf5-dev. Now the difference between these two is that the one with the w, the w means wide or wide characters. Um, it basically supports multi-byte characters, um, which is useful for things like uh, UTF um, multi-byte characters and you know things like bitmojis, stuff like that, or not bitmojis, uh, emojis, um, and other multi-byte characters. Basically, it's good to have. I'd recommend you install this. You'll hit enter, it'll ask you for your password, and then uh, it'll install. I already have it installed, so it didn't do anything, but if you didn't have it installed, it would install it for you. And then, in order to actually compile C++ code, if you're gonna be using C++, you can also use Python, if you'd like, uh, and I think Go. There's a bunch of languages that support and curses now, but uh, all my tutorials are in C++, so if you want to install a C++ compiler, you'll also do sudo apt-get and um, install, and I recommend GCC or G++, depending on if you're using C or C++. Um, there, I think there's another one out there, I forget the name of it, but this is, in my opinion, the best and the most popular one. Again, I already have it installed, both of them, but if you don't have them installed, you should install them. Um... Yeah, so that should be all you need actually to get up and running with NCurses. Um, other than watching my tutorials and learning how to actually write NCurses in C++. So, um, but yeah, so once you've done that, uh, you can actually run commands to compile C++ code. So if you have a C++ file with NCurses in it, you can just run G++ main.cpp is the name of my file. Then you'll run ln curses. I can boost this a little bit more. Uh, G++ main.cpp dash ln curses and actually uh, one sec I'm going to clear this so it's a little bit uh, clear G++ main.cpp dash ln curses now the reason why we throw dash ln curses after main.cpp is because we get weird errors otherwise um, I'll run this just so you guys can see it runs 
cool. But for some reason, if we run dash ln curses first, like you'd think would be okay, um, we get a bunch of errors. I'm assuming it has something to do with uh, the order in which things are included, but everything I've seen online shows it dash ln curses first, but for some reason that just doesn't work for me. If it doesn't work for you either, you should just throw it after main.cpp and it'll work just fine. Um, and then you can run the program. Oh, whoops. Um, oh, yeah, I know I happened because I have to recompile it the correct way. And then I can run it. Awesome. So, anyways, um, that should be all you need to get up and running with VS Code, and Curses, Windows, WSL, developing those things together. Um, if you guys like this video, um, please consider subscribing, watching more in the future, giving it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave those down below or just any general comments. I try to respond to everything. Um, I'll have that status bar part three tutorial coming out soon. So um, stay tuned for that. Um, I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you in the next tutorial.